You just gotta pick the right one. Why is there a crib in here? Something they do to make you feel bad. What is going on everybody? This is Justin Thomas and I am back on my main channel, which has been officially cleared and reinstated by YouTube after I was somehow flagged multiple times for no reason, resulting in the channel being shut down for just under two weeks. This has been recognized as an error on YouTube's part and it has been cleared up and I am back and the important thing is, so is The Walking Dead. And we are going to be discussing episode 2 of season 8, The Damned. If you're interested in my thoughts on the season opener, go to my new second channel, Top Shelf Fandom, and watch my live stream discussion with Broke Black Man 94 All the links will be in the information below. So this is how we're going to do these Walking Dead reviews. I am going to keep them relatively short and to the point, focusing on the aspects I found to be particularly good and those I found to be lacking in one way or another. I will also provide a score for each episode, utilizing a simple 1 to 10 scale, 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. So let's do this. So I want to start off by addressing the ask and you shall receive aspect of these episodes, all the way from the nonstop action we received in the episode to the questionable return of a, I guess, fan favorite, although I think it'd be more accurate to say Morales has a more of a cult following amongst hardcore fans. And what I mean by ask and shall receive aspect is these are all things that the fan base as a whole has been asking for, especially since last season. So we're going to find out if we are happy we got what we asked for in a way are learning the old lesson of be careful what you wish for and let's be honest we asked for more action and we got it so are we filled with joy are we rethinking it a little bit i think as of right now from what i can tell after only having a half day at the very most to take the temperature of the fandom that it seems to be split down the middle which is common for this fandom and as far as i'm concerned i'm fairly happy with the pacing despite a few concerns and only one real issue as far as the action sequences go for this episode and this might be a first but i think we could have used a little bit more exposition so it's more clear cut about what our four groups were exactly doing and more so just the where and why they were doing it i only say this because i think the casual fans could use it and i would even myself of enjoyed to have had my hand held a little bit more with this episode and that is not something i say often i only really have an issue with one of the groups out of the four that we see in these sequences that i have an issue with are what i'm just going to describe as aaron's group i see an opportunity with fixing the issue of the prolonged combat sequence with aaron's group that was not executed as well as i'd have to believe even the showrunners would ideally have liked it to be done scott gimbal even mentioned in the after show that they only had eight days to do this entire episode but i mean all excuses aside if it can't be done well in my opinion don't do it at all in this scene definitely came off repetitive and the overuse of shaky cam made the whole ordeal not only just feel off but look off as well. I think they could have solved two problems at once by cutting this particular set of sequences down by half and injecting a series of short scenes explaining the details in the events we are seeing carried out throughout this episode in place of at least two of these sequences for what I can only describe as Aaron's group. The Walking Dead does do action well, but so far I've been led to believe they don't do big action well, or at least not yet. The Rick and Daryl scenes are fantastic examples of this, especially Rick Grimes doing what he does best, engaging in what I can only describe as primal warfare with his opponent. This is something Andrew Lincoln sells terrifically every damn time, so I really enjoyed the Rick and Daryl scenes all the way to the end, which we will circle back to in a moment. First, though, I will quickly mention my likes and dislikes of the other two group storylines. I think that the Keenig's equal in the Carol scenes were borderline cheesy, but that is, after all, what is great about Keenig's equal. And as long as it stays borderline cheesy and not a full on cheese fest, it will continue to be enjoyable. And I think the placement of Carol with his equal is really enjoyable and smart on the writer's part. Who better to serve as an anchor to reality than Carol, who is definitely the most cynical realist in the show? I think that they are both going to rub off on each other for the best. And they've been doing this almost a season and a half now, and I think it works. And as for Jesus and Tara's team, along with Terminator Morgan, I will say Tara and Jesus are obviously being used for creating the conflict within our groups. And this is a aspect I believe is needed. I mean, we can't have it all be a love fest between our groups. This is The Walking Dead, after all. But they kind of were heavy handed with it. That's kind of a nitpick. Let's just wait and see how they play it in future episodes. And for the man who evidently doesn't die, Morgan, I won't act like I didn't enjoy seeing him not be the frustratingly pacifist uh, back and forth type of character he has been in the past. I am a little torn, though, as far as his character development is concerned. 
concern, meaning I don't know if this is a step back or a step forward for Morgan, or if this is an example of the fans, and myself included, getting what we want, but at a cost. And unfortunately, in this situation, that cost could be the type of in-depth character development and struggles within that we've seen in the past with our characters that, in my opinion, is the beating heart of the show. I want to know your thoughts on this in the comments below. And speaking of your thoughts, I took a poll on Twitter earlier today to see what people thought about the return of Morales. Was it a good idea or not? And as of right now, with the Twitter poll, it seems that out of everybody that's polled as of right now, that 60% approve. Now, I think this is clearly a move to cater to the fans. And even more surprising, at least in my opinion, is that, as I said before, this is a move that kind of caters to the diehard fans, which I guess you can't really argue with in this day and age. Now, I wasn't a Morales advocate myself. I never got behind or even understood the whole passion behind the Morales theories and the demands to bring the minor character from season one back. So I'll say I don't hate it, but in no way am I excited about this by any means. Not only is he a non-essential to the story now, he was non-essential in season one. That's why he's written off in season one. I wouldn't even recommend going back and re-watching the episodes for those drawing a blank on who he was. And I say this because of the fact that hardcore fans are saying they don't even recognize him. Now, obviously part of this is due to the seven years of aging, but I think more important thing to look at is before you say you don't recognize Morales is try to actually explain who Morales is as a character. And I think you will be struggling to define this and more so what he means to the overall plot other than first season nostalgia and fan service. You could have placed anybody in the room with Rick for the scene. It wouldn't have changed the thing. Morales is essentially a brand new character since he never was developed in the first place. But again, I guess if people are happy about this, it's fine. Like I said, he wasn't developed before, so he's obviously going to serve a purpose in the plot now, I'm guessing, unless they kill him in one episode, which I don't think they're going to do. But overall, I enjoyed the episode, and I'm optimistic, especially for the season as a whole. I rate this episode a 7 out of 10. I can't tell you guys how happy I am to be back. I'm going to start getting videos back up every day as I was doing before, and more and more video will be going with these actual videos as the process gets going again. So this is kind of a more podcast format and I will be seeing how you guys like these Walking Dead reviews and putting more and more detail into them as we go. I'm Justin Thomas. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys soon.